A lot of features often go overlooked in Lightroom Classic because it is such a feature-rich application. So in this episode, what I'm gonna do is show you some of my favorite hidden features that are in Lightroom Classic for doing my work as a real estate photographer. I'm gonna do it on an exterior photo, and I'm gonna take this photo, and I'm gonna turn it into this, and I'm gonna be able to do that very quickly in Lightroom Classic using some of these hidden features. Now, there are many other hidden features that are in Lightroom Classic, but I just wanna narrow in on the top few that I use because these can be applied not just to exterior real estate photography, but also to landscape photography and other genres as well. The first hidden feature is what I call the inverted mask, and it's very useful for images like this if this was the only image that you had where the sky is well exposed, but everything else isn't. Now, normally I would be taking a bracket, which I did like here, and then I can blend those together like I show in my course on pro exterior photography. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my courses on real estate photography and videography, I have links to that and my books down in the description for this video. But moving along to this quick tip here, this hidden feature. An inverted mask allows us to take this entire area and bring up the exposure, shadows, or anything else we want to do with it. So what you would do is you go over to your masking tool in Lightroom Classic and you want to select the sky, but that's not what we really want to use. Let it though select the sky and then all you need to do is go to that mask and click on these three little dots which often go overlooked. When you click on that, you've got various selections and one of them near the top is invert. When you do that, it selects everything else. So now we have everything selected that was in basically the ground and the house. So now I can take that and start increasing the exposure. Now I've got a nice, well exposed house and the ground area as well. Now this still needs refined and you'd wanna go back to this mask here and probably subtract from it. You would subtract from it, for instance, using a brush and I like to use a low flow. That way using this brush then I can go in here and I'm not at 100% just erasing everything. So for instance here with a lot of feathering and that low flow, then I can also take some of this off the street. Now for this client, this was captured on a very rainy day. So that's why there's a lot of spots down here that I cleaned up for them in post. But the idea is here is that once I have this then applied, that brush, I can apply one of my post-processing presets to it and really make that just shine. So once again, we started out with something that looked very, very dark on the ground, and we ended up with this, and most of that was done by using that inverted mask. The next hidden feature that I like to use is to make sure that I didn't go too far by pressing the backslash key on the keyboard. When I do that, I go immediately to the before picture, and if I keep hitting, I can see before and after very quick. I'm just capturing very quick. Do I see it? This allows me to edit very fast, and for instance, I can see that this tree needs to have something subtracted from it, so I would go back to that mask that I had, and I would select it, and I would subtract even more more from it, maybe with a new brush. And then with that, then I would start erasing some of that. So I can now have full control seeing the before and after by hitting that backslash key, seeing what's there before. But there's another way to do this as well. And that is if you press Y on your keyboard, and now you can see them both side by side, just by pressing Y. You press Y again, it goes back. But when you press Y and you see this view, then hit tab on your keyboard and you get rid of those sidebars. Now we can see stuff very close. Now, did I go too far maybe here on the roof line? I can zoom in and both images are zoomed in now. And I can see, did I really push it too far on some of the edges? Was it okay? And I can also, by the way, see some of the most shadowed areas are here. So did I introduce any noise over there? Not really, a little bit. So then all I have to do is press tab to go get my sidebars back and Y, and now I'm back to this view. Now, once again, the higher quality will be if you can do the exposure blending like I show in my courses. Here's an example of that. And we have a lot less noise than that's going to be in the shadows because I didn't have to really raise the exposure as I did when I did this inverted mask. This then will have a little bit more noise to it, but if all you had was that single exposure, this is one way to do that. 
Another thing too that comes in very handy after you apply a preset is you know making the final adjustments on your sliders. Well, when you're moving your sliders, they tend to move sometimes in very large increments, especially if you're working on a laptop. So one way to control that better, I love this, is you hold down your shift key while you move this. And then no matter how far I'm moving my mouse, those uh, increments are changing very, very little. So you will get much finer control if you hold down your shift key while you're moving these sliders. Another quick tip here too, a hidden feature, most people don't realize this, is that if you just wanna reset this, yeah, you could type in zero here or whatever, but you could just also double click on the pin and it'll go back to its center position. You can do that with all these. Then of course I could just control Z to go back to where I had those, but just by double clicking on the pin for a slider takes it to its original position. It basically resets that slider. You can also get auto adjustments. This is another hidden feature a lot of people don't realize is that if you hold down shift and then you double click on one of these labels here, then you will get an auto adjustment. So this is what uh, that Lightroom Classic thinks would be the best adjustment for highlights. I don't agree with that, so I'm not gonna do that, but sometimes this can help. For instance, let's take a look at shadows. I'll double click. And I like that. It actually thinks that, well, we need to raise those shadows more because there was a lot of shadowy areas in that. So that's up to you, but that's an auto adjustment once again by just holding down shift and then clicking on one of those sliders. The next hidden feature, which is rarely used, and it's not really so hidden because you can see it over here, it's called snapshots. This is a great way to keep a history of your editing. Let's say that we liked this, we delivered it to a client, but we may wanna do some other adjustments later. Whatever the case may be, what you can do is you can go to where you are in your history and you can see all this history, but if you go down to another portion of your history and you start making edits, everything above it is going to disappear. So to preserve all these settings, you create a snapshot. And all that you need to do is you can go to that portion of the history, you can right click and you can say create snapshot. And then you can name that snapshot whatever you want. For instance, we could name this as a delivered and that would be our first delivered uh, edit that we may have exported out to our client. So we'll just call that delivered and we'll create that snapshot. So now I've got this snapshot delivered. So let's say that we go down here and right before I applied this preset, this I wanna do some adjustments manually. So I started making some adjustments over here, can be whatever they want, but you can see all my history went away. And I'm like, I'm not really digging these uh, adjustments that I'm making here. Nothing seems to be better than what I had before. Let me see what that was. Well, if you really wanna compare the two, then all you have to do is go up here to snapshots and click on delivered. That was your delivered. Then you can go back down to here where your last adjustment was. And if you can, you can once again, make another snapshot of this one too. There are still many more hidden features in Lightroom Classic, but these stand out when I'm doing exterior real estate photography, and you can apply these exact same things to when you're doing landscape and other types of genres as well.